to welcome everyone. Uh, that's our first uh, online seminar. Uh, you will see uh, that there will be a series of seminars that will be made online. Uh, we're trying with uh, people at UTS, UCID, uh, Macquarie, and the Stat Society. A bunch of talks so uh, everyone can uh, can uh, still enjoy their academic life and uh, a little bit of um, uh, energy going. Uh, so you, you will see some emails uh, coming about this relatively soon. So today we have uh, Pierre. Um, Pierre is going to talk to us about uh, depth of curve data. Uh, and that's a paper that uh, he's quite happy with because it got published in Java. So uh, the floor or the Thanks. Thanks a lot, uh, Boris. So uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for being here. So it's a joint work, in fact, with um, um, with uh, Pavlo uh, Mozarovsky and uh, Miriam Bimon. So uh, these, these two uh, persons, uh, I met them when I was uh, working in Brittany in France. Uh, Pavlo just arrived. I, I got there, and Miriam was already uh, there. And now Pablo moved to another place sorry, at uh, Telecom Paris, and Miriam is uh, still there. And uh, <clears throat> so uh, this is the outline of the talk, so I will skip, skip that. And I will start uh, right away by the origin and uh, neuroscientific motivation for, for this work. So in fact, um, I was uh, a professor in Montreal before, and uh, I spent my uh, sabbatical leave, my SSP, uh, in Sydney in 2013, 2014. And uh, I was uh, based in the School of uh, Psychiatry at the time. So I was working uh, four days per week at the School of Psychiatry and one day per week uh, in the School of Maths uh, with uh, Spiro and Yanan and Donna at the time. And uh, when I, I was in this uh, uh, center for healthy uh, brain aging, uh, working mainly with uh, Wei Wen, um, uh, th these people they, they had this the, the study that called that's called the old Australian twin study, right? And they measured some variables on on elderly uh, twins, like age, sex, uh, scanner information, MRI measures, genetic information, and so on. And uh, their group is mainly uh, working on uh, relating genetic information and uh, brain uh, characteristics. So this is the, the hot topic of uh, neuroimaging genetics. And in this, this work here, uh, the genetic information that I will uh, be interested in is called the zygosity. And it's only, uh, so it's not the genes or the SNPs or that kind of thing. So it's only about knowing if the twins are identical twins or non-identical twins. Uh, so uh, in this, this study, we were interested in uh, uh, investigating uh, the white matter. So what is the white matter? In the brain, you have the white matter and the gray matter. So you can see on the, the top uh, right here, uh, you have the brain and you have a neuron and you have this uh, long um, axon. And on this axon, you have some, some kind of cells that, that are white and that help the electricity to uh, flow through this, this axon. And because it's, it's white, uh, these cells, this is why you call this the, the white matter. So basically, the white matter are the long fibers that relate uh, different groups of neurons together to transmit the information. And it's interesting, interesting to know uh, if the uh, white matter integrity is driven more by the genetics or by the uh, environment. And uh, if there is some kind of disease, then if we know that it's driven by the genetics, then we need to uh, use some sort of, of um, uh, genetic or gene uh, therapy. And if it's driven by the environment, then we need to find what are the, the uh, factors that are involved in this, this disease. All right, so what, are the, what is the technology to, to be able to extract some, some data or, or measure this white matter connectivity? So it's based basically on, on this thing called the diffusion tensor imaging. And it's based on the, the principle of water molecular diffusion. 
and you can see on this image that uh, in fact the, the all these fibers in the brain they are surrounded by water and the water molecules they diffuse more easily along the fibers that uh, perpendicular uh, to these fibers and so we can uh, look at this this diffusion this displacement of water molecules using a scanner and using various uh, mathematical tools that I, I will not uh, discuss today all right and the, the main uh, study when i was working in this this uh, school of psychiatry at the time uh, was to study the heritability of the uh, cst tract which is one of the main uh, bundle of fibers uh, uh, tract in the, in the brain uh, that goes from the brain stem at the back of the neck to the motor cortex so it's the 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 fibers that allow you to uh, send information to control your your hands and your legs and stuff like that and it exists uh, uh, for every mammals uh, so it's it's very uh, robust as, as a brain uh, uh, fiber track All right so these are the, the kind of data that, that that we had so you can see here uh, for the two hemispheres we have a set of uh, 1,000 uh, fibers that relay this, this brain stem at the bottom to the motor cortex uh, at the top, right? And, and to analyze this kind of, of so-called polymorphic data, uh, we need some new uh, statistical modeling strategy strategies. So I'm going to start with uh, explaining this notion of, of depth, data depth. So this was the, the topic of research of, of Pavlo uh, Mozarowski when he arrived at, at NSAI in Brittany. I, I mentioned him already at the beginning of my talk. And he gave a presentation of something he was doing at, at the time. And then I, th I thought, oh, uh, that, that's, that's a very good uh, uh, technique to use. And we should try to, to uh, generalize this technique to uh, uh, the, these objects uh, that are curves in, in the brain. So it was introduced by Tukey in 1975. And here you have the formula in the middle of the depth of a point X in red with respect to a probability measure Q uh, that is defined on uh, R to the power of D, right? So basically what, what, what it is, it's uh, you compute the infimum uh, of the, the mass of some uh, closed half space H, and uh, you take all closed half spaces that goes through uh, this point X. So you're interested in into determining what is called the depth of the point X with respect to this probability Q, and you compute the infimum of Q of H for all uh, H which are closed half spaces that uh, goes through X, right? And if this infimum is small, then it means that the depth is, is small. And this depth value is between zero and one. And at the bottom, you have this, this formula here, which is the empirical uh, counterpart of the, the, the first formula. So we just replace the Q probability measure by the, the uh, empirical measure. So to help us understand better what is this, this, this formula, so you can see this, this last formula on the, on the slide. Uh, I'll reproduce this formula at the top here. And uh, the, the aim here is to compute the depths of the point X in red. So I, I display here, you see this point X in red in the, the middle of the cloud of points. And we want to compute the depth of this point, point in red with respect to all the other points. All right, so we have two variables, age and weight. And uh, we have this, this cloud of points. All right, so what we do, we consider a closed half space that contains this red point, and we compute uh, the proportion of points, so the mass which is contained uh, within this, this uh, closed half space. So here we have 161 points, and only 120 of these 161 are within this, this uh, closed half space. So the proportion is uh, 120 divided by 161. And, and then we uh, make this computation for all the closed half spaces, right? So I consider another closed half space, and this is the new value of the proportion, another 147 divided by 161, and so on. And I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find, I try to find the, the infimum, right? And the infimum is obtained here, so it's 13 divided by 161. So this value, this ratio here, 
gives us the depth of uh, this red point with respect to the, the other ones. If I consider another point here, uh, this new red, red point here, uh, and I do the same operation, so I look at all these uh, half spaces, and here the, the new depth is uh, 3 divided by 161. So you can see that the depth is uh, small if the point is on the outside of the cloud, because if the point is really on the outside of the cloud, I will be able to find a closed half space that will contain very few points. Right? And if the depth uh, value is very small, then it means that this point is on the uh, exterior part, part of the cloud of points. It's somehow some sort of uh, outlier, if you want. All right, so uh, based on this, this uh, technique, we can compute also uh, two key uh, trimmed regions. So I will compute, I will find all the, for example, here, all the, the, the half planes that contains only uh, 2 divided by 161, so only half a percent of, of the points. All right, so I do that for uh, all these points. And uh, this is my, my trim region for this alpha value. And I can do that for uh, all values of alpha, and I obtain uh, what is called the depth uh, trimmed regions. Uh, now, of course, uh, remember that the origin, the motivation for this work was to study these brain fibers, and these brain fibers live in a three-dimensional uh, space, all right? So not in, in a two-dimensional space. So there is an equivalence uh, definition for these uh, two key depths uh, in a three-dimensional space. It's exactly the same formula, but here, of course, the point lives in, in 3D, and, and the, the hyperspaces are hyperplanes uh, or hyper, hyper half spaces in, in 3D. And uh, there is this, this uh, S involved here. So you see, uh, go back to the, the formula here, uh, the uh, sphere here, the unit sphere here, is just a convenient way to express all these uh, closed half spaces. So I just consider a vector or a point on this unit sphere, and this gives me a direction, the direction U, uh, that goes from the origin of the sphere to this point on the sphere. And then I take uh, a plane uh, which is orthogonal to this uh, direction U, and that goes uh, through X. And then all the, the space which is on the right of this uh, hyperplane, so H, U, X here, this is my closed uh, half space that I want to consider. And if I let uh, points move around the hypersphere, then I will end up with having all the uh, possible closed half spaces, and I will compute the infimum, as I explained in the previous slides. All right, and of course, there is this trimmed uh, region uh, for three-dimensional cloud of points also. So this was the original idea of, of Tukey, uh, to compute the depth of a point with respect to a cloud of points. All right, so uh, using directly this, this, this uh, this method uh, on our fibers could, could be done because in practice our brain fibers are only observed at a finite number of points, right? But the problem is these points are connected. So if we apply this uh, method directly, then we are going to lose this information uh, on what, uh, what is the link between uh, those points that create uh, a, a given fiber, right? So uh, can we use a more advanced uh, depth concept in that, that uh, context that, that we have of brain fibers? So there is there was a generalization of these uh, two key depths uh, in 2001 and 2009, which is uh, a version of depth or functional data. So the idea is the following. Uh, you consider a set, now the data are, are functions. And what we do is we uh, consider a vertical line here. And then along this vertical line, we have uh, this vertical line will, will uh, cut uh, all these functions at certain points. And we will consider only those points. And then you can see on the formula uh, here that we will compute the depth of uh, these points on the vertical line at t, uh, so t between 0 and 1 fixed. Uh, we will compute the one-dimensional uh, Tukey depth. And then we will uh, integrate for all values of t on the x 
x axis, right? And this integral of this one dimensional depth uh, value will give us the, the depth of the curve y with respect to uh, uh, random element uh, big Y, capital Y, that would generate these, uh, these uh, functions or so stochastic process. Right? Um, so if we apply the, this, this uh, method to these, these uh, functions, then this is what we obtain. Here you see in blue, um, this is the, 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 the function that has the, the higher value of depth, so which is right in the middle. And in yellow, these, these are the, the function that have the lowest uh, values of uh, depth. So these are kind of outliers, right? So uh, this seems interesting because our fibers, you, we can think about these fibers as, as functions, but our brain fibers lives uh, in 3D, 3D spaces, right? In a 3D space. So we would need, uh, there are multivariate process basically, where uh, each point on the fiber is, is determined by x t, y of t, and z of t. So we need the generalization of this uh, depth of functional data uh, in a multivariate uh, space. All right? And this was done, in fact, by Klaskens and, and, and other authors in 2014. Right? So it's exactly, exactly the same formula, but now uh, y is a, a three-dimensional uh, uh, function. But if, is this a good idea to, to use that, that method in our context? Right? So I'm going to show you uh, an example where we have this, this curve uh, S here. And we are, we are going to consider two different parameterizations of this uh, same curve S. So we have the parameterization gamma, parameterization A, gamma 1, and gamma 2, par parameterization B. And these two uh, sets of equations x1 and x2 they defined uh, they define this this uh, curve uh, s but with the different parameterization so what i'm going to do now is to uh, share another window um, so i just need wait a minute sorry i'm going to share this yeah all right Okay, so I don't know if you can see now. So this is my S curve. And if I play this, this, this button here, you can see uh, the effect of this parameterization A. So it's like a moving particle that goes very slowly at the beginning of the curve and then very fast uh, at the end, all right? And if I consider the parameterization B, uh, it's the opposite, so it goes very fast at the beginning and and very uh, very slowly at the at the end, right? So very fast at the beginning and very slowly at the end. But these two parameterization they, they define exactly the same uh, object uh, in space. So the same object is is defined by by these two uh, equations. All right. So now I'm gonna get back to. Um, Share my slides. All right. Okay. All right. So what 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 would happen if we apply this uh, multivariate functional depth uh, using either parameterization A or using parameterization B? All right. Then what will happen if we apply this to a set of curves of S-shaped curves? You can see that, for example, this blue curve here on the left. Uh, is the one which has the maximal uh, depth and the corresponding one on the right. So on the left and on the right, you have exactly the same set of S-shaped uh, curves. And when we compute the, the maximal depth uh, value, we obtain a different uh, curve uh, with parameterization A and with parameterization B. Right? So this means that uh, the choice of the parameterization as, as a, can, can have a huge effect on uh, the, this computation of, of depth, right? So we need another notion of depth because we are interested for our brain fibers in, in geometrical object in space and not about some specific kind of parameterization of these, these fibers. Another example is the following. So this is a very famous example, the FDA uh, example. 
Um, and here again, if we apply parameterization by time or by length, uh, we see in this, this table at the bottom that, uh, for example, by time we obtain um, uh, one here, which is the, the, the one which has the, the, the smallest value of depth, and uh, the same curve when, when we use parameterization by length, uh, it is ranked uh, 13, right? So very different parameterization, very different results with different parameterizations for this example also. So for our context, for our uh, application, we need a different notion of, of depth. And this was the, the topic of uh, this research, in fact. All right, so I need to introduce a few uh, mathematical concepts and, and um, notation first before uh, going to the the, uh, um, the meat of, of of this research right so uh, parameters parameterized curve what is a parameterized curve or also called the path it's a continuous map gamma from 0 1 to r to the power of d and uh, we're gonna not s uh, gamma uh, the image of this this uh, continuous map and this is called the locus of gamma, all right? So for each point on the segment zero one here, we end up by, by using gamma on a point on this uh, on this this uh, locus um, S gamma, all right? And now because we want to get rid of these parameterizations, we are going to define to define uh, an equivalent relationship, an equivalent relation uh, R here, and we're going to say that two uh, path or two parameterized curves gamma 1 and gamma 2 uh, are equivalent uh, if they share the same locus and if the points are visited uh, in the same order right so two continuous maps will define the same uh, object in space uh, the same locus of points and these points will be visited in the same uh, order uh, then from the from from that step we define the equivalence uh, class of gamma up to this equivalence relation and uh, this equivalence class this is what we call the unparameterized curve and basically this is just considering that all these curves that are uh, equivalent to each other we put them in the same bag and we consider the bag as uh, our unparameterized uh, curve and then we consider the space of all unparameterized curves which is defined here in the middle and uh, if we endow this space with the Frechet metric, which is defined here, then we end up with the metric space that ha have some nice properties. And on this uh, metric space, we, we have some nice properties and we are able to define uh, probability measures on, the, on this uh, space. All right, so uh, we also need to define the length of, of a curve uh, C of an unparameterized curve. So how do we do that? Uh, well, we consider uh, any kind of, of uh, parameterization of this uh, unparameterized curve. And then uh, we uh, consider a, a subdivision of uh, the interval 0, 1. And you can see on the, the, the drawing here, we uh, subdivide this, this uh, locus uh, with the fine grid. And then we compute the length of every segment. And we add uh, the, all the lengths of these segments together. And the sum of these uh, of the length of these lengths, when we let this grid become finer and finer, at the limit, uh, this is the length of, of the curve. So this is defined with this formula, the, the supremum of this sum of these uh, length of, of segments, right? For every kind of of uh, of, um, of subdivision, all right? And uh, if the length is finite, then we call this this a rectifiable uh, unparameterized curve. So uh, there is this proposition that was uh, done in 2006 uh, in this book. I will give you the reference at the end of the talk, which is called the normal parameterization. And uh, they say that there exists a unique parameterization, uh, which is the so-called arc length parameterization, uh, noted beta c, uh, which has somehow a constant speed along, along the curve. Okay, we will use this, this notation or this notion a bit uh, later. Uh, so we need to uh, introduce two more things here. So the line integral along a curve. Uh, so if we have a function f that goes from rd to rd, 
the line integral of f over this unparameterized curve is given by uh, this formula here in the middle. So it's just the integral from 0 to 1 of f of beta c of t. Beta c is this uh, normal parameterization of the curve, parameterization with the constant speed. So remember when I showed this s, we had this particle moving along. So then the particle will we, we move with constant speed along the curve. And we multiply by L of C, which is the length of the curve, right? And uh, thanks to this uh, line integral business, we are able to introduce the probability measure mu C, uh, the, this formula, the, whose formula is given here, right? So it's uh, the line integral of the uh, indicator uh, of A of SDS divided by L of C. And uh, roughly speaking, this is just uh, how much of the curve uh, intersects with this uh, this uh, this Borelian set A, right? So you consider this Borelian set A, and then you have this curve C, and you see how much of this length goes within this this uh, uh, space or this this uh, set A, right? And this portion divided by L of C, this is the mu C of A. And uh, now uh, we are uh, in a situation where we can create this, um, this depth uh, of, uh, of a curve C with respect to a probability measure, measure P. So it, you see this, this, uh, this uh, formula here, the, the depth of C with respect to P. What is P is a probability measure defined on the probability uh, defined on the, 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 the space of unparameterized curves uh, with this distance uh, Frechet metric that I, I mentioned previously. And uh, this dc of p, this is the line integral of this ds qp mu c, which is defined, which is the last formula on the slide. And what is this formula? Is somehow the equivalent of this infimum I explained at the very beginning. Right. So this infimum is the infimum of a ratio here. So once again, we, we consider all the u on this uh, hypers hypersphere. And uh, now uh, qp of h ux uh, is defined on the, the uh, first formula at the top here. This is the expected value of mu uh, key of a. So what is key? Key is a random element of C. So it means that key is uh, like a random variable, uh, generate um, uh, values uh, which are real numbers. Key is a random element uh, which generates uh, uh, curves. Right? So each time I, I use this random element, it generates a curve that belongs to this uh, space of unparameterized curves. And I compute the expected value of mu key of a. Mu key, this is remember, mu c of a is how a curve intersects with a. So this expected value here is what is how much on average uh, curves generated by key intersect uh, with a. So that's qp of a. So in this infimum at the bottom, uh, I compute how much on average curves uh, generated by uh, key, which has probability p, uh, intersect with this uh, closed half space hux divided by mu c of hux, where c is a given curve. And x here is in red. x is an element that belongs to um, the, the locus of, of the unparameterized curve. Right? So x belongs to this geometrical object which we can uh, visualize in, in 3D if you want. And for each one of these x value belonging to this, this uh, 3D object, I compute this, this formula here, the infimum in blue, and then I integrate for all these values along the points uh, on this, this uh, locus. And this gives, me, gives us what we define as the depth uh, for curve. Uh, the, the statistical model for these curves is that we assume that we have an IID sample of, of random elements key one and uh, key n that generates 
uh, curves and uh, we have uh, potentially deterministic curve C um, and we are interested in computing the depths of this curve C with respect to these random elements key one to key n and we just apply the previous formula so we just apply this formula here on, on the slide 27 by replacing this measure QP by the measure QN which is defined here and which is ju just the empirical version of empirical measure of, of uh, uh, associated with QP and beta C is the normal parameterization I, uh, with this, this thing with cons constant speed right? so uh, here you have this on the, the top of this slide you have this uh, formula um, the, the empirical version of the formula and uh, you have these uh, three uh, plots here uh, drawings and uh, maybe it's easier to understand what's, what's going on here so um, you want to integrate from zero to one for every point x belongs to the support uh, of c the locus of, of c so for every point x that belongs to this red curve we are going to consider this h of u1x and each time we let we consider a new u on this hypersphere s then we will have a different h uh, ux so h1x h2x h3x x and so on all right and then we are going to look at uh, mu c of h u x so mu c of h u x c is uh, associated to this this uh, curve in red right and mu c of h u x is how much of the length length of c uh, uh, delves into the half space h u x right and we compare that to how how much of the curve c1 to cn uh, intersect uh, with the same uh, half page h u x right and we take this ra ratio so when this ratio and we we try to find the infimum over all the this u so this ratio will be small when uh, the numerator will be large uh, small and the numerator will be large so the numerator will be large when c will inter intersect a lot with h u x and the numerator will be uh, small when c1 to cn will intersect very little with this h u x so we try to find uh, a hypothesis uh, a h u x that contains uh, very few of these uh, these uh, n fibers and a lot of this uh, red c fiber so that's that's the idea basically and we uh, proved a few results around this, this measure. So this measure is uh, uh, between zero and one. Uh, it has this property of uh, similarity invariance. So it means that if we do a rotation of the space or a scaling of the space, uh, uh, then the, the value of the, the, the depth is not uh, changed. And vanishing at infinity, if we take this curve C and we send this curve uh, uh, very far away for, for, from the, 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 the mass of the other fibers, then the depth of this, this fiber will uh, tend to zero. All right? And we prove the weak consistency of this uh, empirical version of, of uh, this measure. All right, so uh, when I go back to this formula here, for example, uh, so in practice, the curve C is known and the curve c1 and cn are known all right so in practice they are only observed at a disc uh, a discrete point but they are known but uh, computing this quantity uh, is difficult because there is an infimum over all the u on a hypersphere sphere and then you have the to integrate uh, from zero to one so it's difficult to, to compute that uh, explicitly it's only possible in, in very simple uh, cases not for for real data and so we provided this um, uh, Malo algorithm that helps to compute this, this formula. So this Monte Carlo, uh, it has uh, four parts. So uh, there is a part to uh, approximate this denominator here, mu c, 
there is a part to approximate the numerator here, uh, this average on, on the top. There is a part to approximate the infimum, and then there is a part to approximate the uh, integral. So here, if I go back to this uh, this uh, Monte Carlo approximation, uh, on on at, on line two, you see we generate IID observations from mu c. So it, it just means we generate observations uniformly along the the locus of of c, and then we use this information these uh, observations to estimate uh, mu c. Uh, so we estimate, we approximate this, this uh, denominator uh, in this ratio in the previous formula. Uh, uh, from lines three to five, we generate observations, same thing, uniformly along each one of the, the n curves. And then we use this formula to approximate each new uh, key i. And then we approximate this uh, qn by this formula on line six. Uh, on line seven, <clears throat> on line seven, uh, we generate observation. <clears throat> again, uh, from UC, and this will be used uh, to compute the integral. And from line eight to ten, uh, we uh, use this Z to compute the uh, infimum, right? So we can see that on this, this uh, small animation. So we want to compute the formula at the bottom on the left. And this is the, the, uh, the integral version of it. All right. <clears throat> and uh, so we generate points on, on, on this. Uh, so here, the curves, the red curve is this red circle. We're interested in computing the, the depth of this red circle with respect to uh, the set of all the articles. So all the other circles are 25 circles, key one to key n. So these are my other uh, circles, right? And then uh, U uh, belonging to S, uh, this is the arrow in, in green. So this gives, you, gives us the direction of U on the hyposphere. And then this gives us the, uh, this uh, closed half space. And we generate uh, the Z observation along the C curves. This will help us to compute the integral. Uh, the uh, red points on the C curve, uh, this will help us to compute uh, the denominator of the fraction of the ratio. And all the blue curves, this will help us to compute the QN uh, at the denominator. All right? And then we compute the infimum uh, by considering all these uh, U on uh, this uh, hypersphere. Right? So, uh, we apply this this Monte Carlo algorithm, and then this is what we obtain. Uh, so the blue curve is the one with the highest uh, depth, uh, for example. So we have several more examples like like that in the in the, the paper if you are uh, interested. And in the paper, we uh, for these very simple examples, we are able to obtain a closed form expressions for the the depth, and so we can um, double check that the Monte Carlo uh, approximation or algorithm. Uh, is is working to recover this this uh, very simple cases toy examples basically so now get back to uh, applications uh, we applied uh, this, uh, new methods to uh, hurricane uh, trucks right so uh, uh, Miyazaga and and other people in 2014 uh, they proposed a visual visualization of uh, several historic hurricane trucks in the Gulf of Mexico between 1920 and 2012. And you can see on the, the bottom uh, right uh, picture uh, the trajectories. And in uh, red, these are identified as, as outliers by uh, this application of some modification of functional depth uh, method. And the, the yellow one is the median curve. So you see it's not. Uh, working very well because we can see that there are some red curves that are right in the middle of this this kind of, of uh, region, right? So uh, if you are interested, you can go on this website here and you can extract some some uh, some fibers, some some trajectories, hurricane uh, trajectories. So we did that, and we applied this uh, multivariate functional half depth with uh, time parameterization. 
and with uh, arc length parametrization. And you can see here that we have several uh, curves that are right in the middle. So the, the red curves are the ones that are labeled as outliers because they have a low value of depth by this uh, multivariate functional half depth method. And same thing with these different parametrization. We applied another well known uh, multivariate simplicial depth uh, function. And once again, there are some, some trajectories that are labeled as outliers, whereas they are right in the middle. Right? The blue, the dark blue uh, trajectory here, one which has the, the maximal uh, depth value. And our method that works without any kind of, of um, parameterization, so the two key curve depth parameterization, you can see that all the uh, trajectories, so same trajectories are, are, as in the other uh, slides. So all the trajectories that have low value of depth, so they are uh, labeled as outliers, they are really uh, on the outside of the bundle of, of trajectories. So, so we do a better job in that respect. So this, this approach could provide maybe a better confidence of which US regions are more at risk of suffering from hurricanes. And this could have potentially some interesting applications in, uh, for insurance uh, companies. OK, so now let's get back to, uh, in the 15 minutes I have left, to uh, this brain uh, imaging application and the original motivation of, of this work. So remember, uh, this, this is this older Australian twin study. Um, uh, so we have uh, 34 uh, pairs of twins, 11 uh, DZ uh, pairs. So these are the, the dizygotic, or dizygotic, I don't know how you pronounce that, uh, pairs of twins, uh, which are the non identical twins, and 23 uh, pairs of uh, MZ, which are the uh, identical twins. So 68 brains in total. And for each one of these uh, person, we extract uh, 1,000 fibers uh, on the left hemispheres and on the right hemispheres that connect the, the brain stem to the motor cortex. And the different questions, uh, scientific questions we, we would like to answer are uh, in terms of information compression uh, for better understanding of brain organization, in terms of outer detection for indication of, of fibers that are wrongly uh, tracked uh, in terms of curve registration, because we want to align uh, a bundle of fibers from one uh, subject to a bundle of fiber of, a, of another subject. And, and these two fibers, these two subjects, they might uh, have bundle of fibers that are not really aligned because when they were in the scanner, for example, their head might be in a different uh, orientation or stuff like that. And uh, then we want to, to study the genetic uh, dependency uh, to potentially later on uh, identify disease uh, causes. So these are the type of data that we have, 1,000 fibers on each hemisphere. And uh, when we applied uh, this, this new method that we developed, uh, this is what we obtained. So I'm going to show you another uh, application. So, yeah, so this is a small animation that we have done here. So you see these are the, the 1,000 fibers, five, fibers, and they are colored according to the, the depth value that we found using our, our methodology. And then using this slider, we can, for example, uh, remove uh, the fibers that have a depth uh, below uh, some threshold. Okay, so here, for example, I can keep only the fibers that have a depth uh, above 0 0.6. And this makes easier for neuroscientists to uh, visualize all these fibers. So this is very convenient to be able to visualize uh, fibers. All right. So let me get back to slides now. Okay, so in terms of information compression, then what we can do is keep only the fibers which have the, the, the maximum depth value. So these are somehow the median of the bundle of fibers, right? And then we, we can just uh, do further analysis just using this, this median 
carbon fiber. So this is some, some sort of uh, information compression. Uh, in terms of outlier detection, so here, uh, once again, uh, we put in red the fibers that are detected as having the lowest uh, depth value with, with our method. And this is what we get. So you can see that all these fibers that are in red, they are indeed uh, detected by our approach as being outliers. And maybe they are uh, interesting in themselves and, and neuroscientists would like to uh, investigate why they are like that, or it's just a problem of the tracking uh, method that were, was used to detect uh, these fibers in the brain uh, that made some errors and we just want to remove them. Uh, we compare this, this uh, outlier detection uh, ability ability uh, between different uh, methods. And uh, you can see here that uh, we compare to the multivariate uh, band depth, simply shall band depth, and uh, different version of that. And uh, uh, here we can see our method is right on the, uh, the, the one on the, on, the, on the right. And uh, we have a most um, um, steep increase of the depth value, which enable us to uh, detect outliers. And we have some, some sort of break of the, the, the increase of the depth here. All right, so we, we do somehow a better job. And we can see, for example, that for SBD, this uh, fiber here that was detected as outlier for us, it's, it's in blue, so it, was, it is not detected as outlier. And also we have several, for all the other methods, we have several fibers that are in red uh, and so detected as outlier, but which are right in the middle of the, the bender. So this, this seems to be a problem. Uh, another application is in terms of uh, curve uh, registration. So we want to realign different bundles together. So what we did uh, for each person, we computed, uh, let's say just, just for the left hemisphere, we computed uh, the median of the fibers. So, so the fiber with the highest value of depth. So each one of the, the 68 uh, twins, we, we did that. So we end up with 68 um, deepest uh, fibers. And then we take these 68 deepest fibers together and we compute the deepest of, of these fibers. So it's the deepest of all, if you want. And the deepest of all is this fiber in uh, dark blue here on, on the three uh, plots, all right? And then we try to align for each subject, each its which we try to align for each subject, its deepest fiber to this deepest of all. And we try to align that by uh, rotating um, or translating uh, this uh, deepest fiber. Uh, and uh, we measure the, the, the quality of this modification by using uh, um, uh, least square, uh, using the distance that I defined, the, the discretion distance that I defined at the beginning of the talk. So we did that for all the subjects. And you can see, for example, for a few examples of them at the bottom, that the, the distance decreased from 10 to 3, or from 4 to 3 something, or from 3 to 2. So we, are, we were able to decrease the distance and do, do some kind of good job in terms of, of curve uh, registration. All right, so I'm, I'm almost finished. Uh, 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 another thing which is uh, called the DD plot. So here on this DD plot, if we consider a red plot here, a red uh, circle here, uh, the red circle is what is the depth of one. So each circle corresponds to a fiber, an original fiber. And so for one fiber, we compute the depth of this fiber with respect to the other fibers in the same bundle of, of the subject. And uh, this gives us the value on the x axis. And so we take this fiber and we put this fiber in the bundle of the other twin. Okay, and then we comp compute the depth fiber when it is put in the bundle of the other twin, and this gives us the value of depth uh, on the y-axis. And we do that for the, the all the, the fibers in the bundle for uh, a pair of twins. Right? So on the first row, you have these DD plots for the GZ uh, twins, so non-identical twins. And for the bottom row, we have the same thing for three uh, pairs of identical twins. And then we applied a modification of the uh, Wilcoxon test for, for this, this kind of, of, of DD plots. And we were able to compute p-values based on that. 
So the p-value is, is small when we reject the hypothesis of uh, equi uh, equality of distance of the, the organizations of the fibers in the brain, if you want. And you can see here in the caption that the p-values are 0, 0 0.070, 0 0.003. So very small for the nine identical twins. So for nine identical twins, we reject this equality of, of uh, distribution. And for the bottom um, row, uh, values are 0 0.733, 0 0.366, 0 0.6366. So a large p-value. So we do not reject the equality of, of uh, distribution. So this is some sort of convincing arguments that uh, with this method, we are able to say that uh, the spatial organization of the fibers in the brain is driven by the genetic. All right. So as a conclusion, um, I'm going to stop uh, there. Uh, we define a new novel uh, notion of depth that is based on, on the geometry of the fibers. Um, and uh, we obtain some, some nice uh, theoretical properties. And uh, this can be used, uh, as I uh, showed today, as descriptive statistics. Uh, but in the paper, we have also some uh, other nice application in terms of supervised or unsupervised classification. And we have this R package uh, CurDev that is now available on the CRAN. And uh, so this, this was applied on 60 uh, brains. Uh, but uh, we are uh, working uh, currently with these, these people in the Neuroscience Center at UNSW to apply the same uh, method to 40,000 brands. But this is very time consuming. So this is why we, we are using this, this uh, uh, new uh, supercomputer. So uh, thank you very much for, for the attention. I show you the, the, the references here in case you want to access them uh, afterwards because uh, Boris told me that the, the slides are uh, recorded. So thanks a lot. And uh, I'm ready for the, um, the question now. So, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Pierre. Thanks. Thanks a, go thanks a lot, Boris. Uh, thanks, Jerry. Jerry is sending a round of applause. Yeah. Uh, uh, I had a I few questions, I think, but I cannot see where they are. So in the chat, there was a... Oh, all right, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, I can see a, a question by uh, uh, Jan Zika. I hope I pronounced uh, cor correctly. Um, can the depth uh, be translated into a distance metric for the purposes of clustering uh, curves? Yeah, exactly. So this is what, what we've done. Uh, we, um, we use some clustering approach you know, using this uh, well-known uh, MNIST uh, digits. So you have this famous uh, MNIST uh, digits. Uh, so it's images of 0, 1, 2, 3, the, the, the 10 uh, digits. And we show that uh, we are able to, uh, to uh, do some clustering of them. Or we do some clustering of, of curves also. Uh, and also we do some uh, unsupervised uh, uh, clustering, uh, supervised clustering, sorry. Um, Thanks, Mike. Sorry. Okay, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so uh, maybe I, I sort of missed it. Did, did you just say use the fresh air distance within this method? Like I might have missed it, but you. you the fresh air distance was, was used um, to um, to when when I did this this uh, this um, uh, registering of curves trying to align curves one uh, to the other, right? Uh, I had to compute the distance between one curve and, and the other. So the way to compute this distance is, is based on this, this uh, fresh distance. But we provide in the paper an, a, a, an efficient algorithm to, to do that in practice, in fact. Hmm. Yeah, so, so one issue, um, for example, with the, the cyclone measurements with the I mean, I, I've just been thinking about this problem a lot lately, so I very much enjoyed yep. your talk. But when I looked at the fresh air distance, one of the issues is it's it's in, and I think you're, you're often using the the minimum or the infimum of the distances between the points in the curve. Uh, no, 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 well, oh, no. Okay. So, sorry. sorry. Yeah, for for the example with the curves, we didn't use this this fresh air distance. Okay. The fresh air distance is is only here to 
to ensure that the the underlying uh, space of curves is a, is a metric space, and then we are able to define probabilities on that that space. Okay. So the way we we obtain these 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 things I, I showed with the the, the circles yeah. is just computing this uh, infimum of these ratios of depth, and this depth is is just computed using this uh, half space uh, business where. I, okay. I consider yeah. half space and then I, I consider how much of, of a curve enter this half space. So the distance was not used for that, this specific yes. application. Okay, okay, good, good. Yeah, yeah. Good, thanks. Yeah, thank you for the, the question. Yeah. There are any other questions? You can either speak or raise your hand. Uh, Thank you, Luna. Uh, Karen, I was wondering on, on your last slide. Yes. You were yeah. saying that uh, to go from 68 uh, uh, brains yep. Uh, yep. to 40,000, you, yep. you're going to use the supercomputer. Are you applying exactly the same method, or are you gonna are you gonna try and change some some of the things for the to make the computations faster? Um. For the moment, the way that the, the depth is computed is uh, not uh, parallel, all right? But because there is this Monte Carlo uh, algorithm, we can parallelize uh, uh, some 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 stuff in that. Uh, so I don't know if we will do that soon because uh, of what's what's everything what's happening. But uh, this being said, for this application. This guy, these supercomputers, it has a lot of, of processors. So we can just write a script and send uh, a pair of twins on each one of the um, of the processors to, to, to do that in parallel somehow without having to modify the the uh, the theory or the algorithm. So to answer your question, we are going to use the same exact for, for the we are going to use the same exact methodology uh, but we are going to go further in terms of computing this this thing uh, called the uh, heritability and that kind of things based on these gd plots to be able to quantify uh, uh, to quantify how much of of the of the, the spatial organization organization of the brains is driven by the genetics and how much is driven by the environment yes yeah, so, so what you're going to in terms of computations is the same thing except that you do it on the supercomputer so you can have more more brains at the same time and you hope to get more information basically yeah exactly so for each pair you have seen for each pair of twins we compute this dd plot this this uh, this plot with all the red mm -hmm. and blue points yeah. uh, so we do that only for one pair of points so we for mm -hmm. one processor we can just send uh, two twins and do the and then on another processor, right. we can yeah we can do that. The only uh, uh, thing is that we have to put all these these uh, uh, fibers together at some stage to compute the the deepest level. So this might might be the bottleneck here in our computation. So I will have to investigate that. Can you can you just get it at the end and then just merge everything? Uh, before uh, before computing these these uh, DD plots, we have to align all these bundles of fibers together, and to mm. do that, we have to uh, put all the we have to take the deepest fiber of each bundle. So here we have forty thousand bundles, forty thousand people, so forty thousand bundles. So we we'll end up with forty thousand deepest fibers. So it's one thousand fibers for each person. So 40,000 persons times 1,000 fibers, that's the number, total number of fibers. But for each 1,000 fibers, we compute the deepest fibers for each person. So we end up with 40,000 deepest fibers. And we have to put all these 40,000 deepest fibers together to find the deepest of all. And this might be very time consuming. So this is where uh, trying to improve the methodology to, to use some clever idea in the algorithm would be useful. But after that, we can just send a pair of twins per per, uh, per processor. Yeah, so so it's good that there is Gadi. 
Yeah, exactly. That's a very good thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, are there any other questions or any comment to from Pierre? Uh, everyone seems to be pretty happy. It was clear. Yeah, just, um, just Jake was not not very happy about the media New can going through New Orleans because he comes from New Orleans. But <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So it should have been recorded. Uh, I, I will double check, but that means that um, then it will be put. Your talk will be put online somewhere if anyone wants to to go through it again. Thanks a lot. Thank you, uh, William. Thank you, everyone, and have a nice uh, weekend.